So have you guys ever wondered um, what happens to the water that you see all around us? We have water out here in the bay. We have water in our streams and rivers. Have you guys ever wondered where that water comes from? You wonder where it goes when you see it flowing through the environment? Well, it all starts with rain and it all ends as rain. But how it moves through the environment, through our landscape where our houses and our schools are, is all part of the water cycle. And we're going to talk about some of the ways that the water moves through our environment. One of the things I do is study watersheds and how the watersheds are linked to what happens in our rivers, streams, and oceans. And, and, and <clears throat> like Nicole said, a watershed is a body of land. Um, your neighborhood might be a watershed. All the water in your neighborhood when it rains, it runs off the lawns, the um, streets, and some of it will accumulate in the puddles and evaporate, but most of it runs into some pond or a little stream or river. So your neighborhood is a really small watershed. And the first thing you learn about watersheds when you start studying them is they come in many different sizes and kinds. Do anybody know what this is? And this is, do you know what that is? A map of the U.S. Mercy. It's the Mississippi River Basin. And in fact, the Mississippi watershed or, or, or basin drains 41% of the whole United States. It drains land all the way from Iowa and Montana, wow. as well as Tennessee and Kentucky and Minnesota, as well as Louisiana and Arkansas. So it drains 41% of the whole U.S. And, and all the stuff, when it rains, on all of these lands in the Mississippi Basin and that rain runs off the land and not all of it runs off. Some of it goes into groundwater like you pointed out to me. Some of it goes back up into trees and it's held in the soil but most of it runs off and it's all going to run down this pathway. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our model. This is our Enviroscape, and this represents an area where most of us um, probably live. We have our rivers here. We have the ocean down here. Here we have a resort with a golf course. We have a farmhouse here with our big field for agriculture where we grow our food and our crops. We have a gas station here. We have your residential house uh, where you might live. We have marinas and boat docks. So we have a lot of different um, things that we do with the landscape. And you see we have all our streets and all the ways that humans build the landscape and they build in their watersheds. And what we call these things are different different land uses. So the farm or the house or the marina, these represent various land uses. And we're going to take a look at what happens to water as it moves through an environment, through a landscape, or through a watershed. And we're going to see how these different land uses affect how fast water moves, where it goes, and what happens to the quality of that water. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we're going to have a big rainstorm. Okay, so you can see the, the water going down is like it raining and it's filling up that stream or river. See what happens. What do you think is going to happen when it hits the land? It's going to flood. What's going to happen with the, what is on the land? It's, um, it's all going to go down into the ocean and it's just going to fill up with all of our trash and stuff. So we're going to pretend, so that was filling up our rivers. Now we're going to make it, we're just going to make it drizzle and we're going to rain. So sorry if I get you guys wet. This is just water. This is simulating our rain event. And we can focus in on what happens over here on the farm. That red stuff right there is going to represent the pesticides we put on the farms to maybe take care of pests or bugs. We have this brown part right here represents soil from the agriculture eroding away. If we look at the green over here on the golf course, that's fertilizers, things you put on your yard and on the golf course to make the plants green and help them grow. Um, let's see, over here we have our house and right here in the back is what we call a septic field. And this is where all the wastewater from your house might go if, for example, you don't, you're not connected to public sewer systems, then you might collect it in a field in the back of your house, and if it rains a lot and this overflows, then some of that sewage can actually leak into our waterways. So you can see this brown right here flowing out into the rivers and into the ocean. Right here at our gas station, this is called a holding tank, so a lot of gas stations will collect waste materials or runoff or petroleum underneath. And if we have a really big flood, 
let's make it flood. So let's say there's a hurricane and we get a lot of rain. There's what happens to that holding tank and you get all of that oil and all of that pollution that runs down into our waters. So you can see by what we put on the land and the various uses that we have for the land affects what's going to happen in the rivers and eventually down into the ocean where you can see the water starting to turn colors. And in the environment, a lot of this pollution you can't see with your own eyes. We made it colored here so that you can see what happens, but a lot of times it's really hard to see this stuff. Um, I'm going to just point out two things for you. This is supposed to be a farm pond, and what happened to all the pesticides that ran off the land? It went into it. Uh, it, it a lot of it got caught in that pond, and we're going to talk about how it happens, but uh, <clears throat> there are really two types of pollution that are going to run off the land. That which comes from no specific source. We call it non-point source. It doesn't come from a particular place, and, 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 and that's coming up here, and in addition to that, Becky will go into great detail, but this stuff, see these oysters which washed up under the bridge, I think. Um, anyway, oh, they washed all the way down. The oysters that are in the land, well, that's a, that, would you want to be eating those oysters if they were sitting in there? No. Well, why not? Well, yeah, but think about the oyster. It's, oysters are clams. They filter stuff out of the water. And they would be fish filtering this chemical out because they're pumping lots of water. And they would accumulate it in their tissues. And you could die. And it, would make, it might make you sick, so it might affect your health from eating them. But it's not good for the oyster either. It would probably kill the oysters also, or the fish. And also, over here was a, a yard which has a lot of what's supposed to be animal waste, the, the pet waste. Somebody didn't pick up the pet waste in their yard. Well, you know, one of the things that's associated with pet waste are bacteria. Do you guys know what bacteria are? Okay, little microscopic organisms. And, and so these bacteria are washing in here. And into the river and ultimately into the ocean and the shellfish and fish mostly the shellfish are going to filter out those bacteria and try to eat them and they will eat some of them but they accumulate a lot of them so that if you eat a shellfish you could get very very sick Christian from Moultrie Middle asked a question and he asked what can we do on a daily basis to help water quality so this is, these are some things that you all can do every day to help your own watershed, okay? So one thing would be to reduce impervious surfaces. Do you know what the word impervious is? Have you ever heard that word before? That means something that water can't run through. So this parking lot here or these roads, they're impervious. The water can't run down. But on the grass, the water can seep down and go into groundwater. Okay? You want to reduce the number of roads and parking lots and impervious surfaces you have because if there's pollution on that and it rains, it runs down into your water. But a lot of the pollution on the grass or in wetlands, it can be cleaned by the wetlands. They clean the water out. So a few ways that you can reduce impervious cover is to have a gravel driveway instead of a normal concrete driveway. You could have pervious concrete, which means that the water runs through the concrete, and we're going to show that. Nicole's going to pour, this is a little piece of pervious concrete. You know what normal concrete looks like and what happens when water rains on that? So this is some pervious concrete. So if you can look underneath, you can actually see the water flowing through. And if this was on a parking lot, rather than um, collecting all the oil and gasoline and heavy metals from our cars and then washing it into the river, this would actually wash through the concrete into the soils below, and those soils would help filter that water before it ultimately made it w its way into our rivers. So thank you for that. And there's some other ways that you can, you can help get the water into, into trees and wetlands that can clean it. You can build buffers. Have you ever heard of buffers? No. A buffer is an area of trees or wetlands that is up against a river, and it keeps whatever's on the grass or the parking lot from running down in that river because it can be cleaned by the salt marsh or by the wetland or by the trees. And then two other things that you could do on a daily basis, you can pick up after your pets. Pet waste produces bacteria, like Fred said, that can go down into the estuaries and affect our oysters. And then the last thing that you want to remember is you want to recycle oil from your cars. That's another thing you can do with your cars instead of dumping it in wetlands. You want to take it to a landfill to recycle it.